Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I just want to introduce the idea of effective length for columns with different end conditions. Because in the last video, we only looked at a, a two-dimensional column that was pinned in both our, on both sides. And when we had that, we said that our P critical, that critical load that would uh, pretty much cause it to buckle, is equal to pi, uh, that was pi squared, EI, over L squared. Now, when we have something like this, a double, uh, uh, double pin connection in a column, it's free to bend basically all the way from pin to pin. So you're going to end up getting some sort of deflection, probably like that. Now, if we applied the same point load here on, uh, on a member that is fixed on one end and free at the other, then it's not going to deflect the same way, basically. It's going to go something like that. All right, and similarly, if we're looking at one that has a, a, a column that has a pin on one end and a fixed connection on the other, it's going to be different. And also, if we have a fixed connection on one end and a fixed, two fixed connections, basically, it's going to also deflect differently. So in the case of two fixed connections, because uh, even after a deflection, the rigid connections stay rigid, we're going to be getting something. This is super exaggerated, but it's going to come out straight like that. And, uh, and then something like that, there'll be a curve in the middle and it'll come back in straight. And then same thing on that, if we have a fixed connection on one end, it's going to come out straight like that. But then this pin up here is free to just deflect right at the pin. So we're going to end up with some wildly exaggerated deflection just like that. And the way that we account for these is we have to talk about effective length rather than just the actual length of the column. So effective length, what we should really be writing this equation as is uh, with a subscript E here saying this is the effective length. Now in the case of the pin to pin connection, we can even write this here, uh, pin pin, then our length here is going to be equal to the effective length and that's why this expression here doesn't change at all if whether or not we're talking about uh, effective length or just length because it's the same when we have double pin. Now in the case where we have a uh, a fixed end uh, along with a free end for a column, then really the effective length is actually going to be twice the uh, tw twice the length of the actual column because this would act the, you see this curvature up here. Basically, if you just continued it into the ground, it looks something like that, and it forms that curvature. And so we can write here that um, if this is L of the column, then uh, L E is equal to, so LE is this, uh, is equal to 2L. Now without deriving all of these numbers, uh, for the case where we have a column that is uh, fixed on both ends, so it's a fix fix, then basically its effective length here is just going to be LE is going to be equal to uh, 0.5L. And in the case where we have a a fixed end uh, in, in conjunction there with a pin end, then the effective length that we're going to be working with is going to be LE is equal to 0.7L. So really the only modification that you have to uh, add into this expression here is just uh, making sure that you're using LE rather than just the length. And uh, it's pretty simple. You just apply the factor, whether it's a factor of 1, 2, 0 0.7, or 0 0.5. And then pretty easily from there, you can, uh, you can calculate the critical load for your column. Um, same thing goes for the other expression that we had here for critical stress. So if we just write that in, uh, that was pi squared E over LE. So just subbing in that L E over R squared again. In the previous video, we were only looking at the pin-pin connection, so we just had L over R squared. But to be proper, you should be using L E uh, in place of L for those two expressions. Now, there's one other thing to mention about this stuff is that these drawings here are in two dimensions, and uh, these formulas apply to uh, to when you're just considering one dimension at a time, basically. If you imagine, let's look at this first one here. If you imagined that this is a three-dimensional problem, this hinge here is actually fixed to the ground, but these wheels here are, are not in a, a groove or anything, and this wall has zero friction. It's like a super icy wall or something like that. Well, side to side, it's a pin-to-pin -pin connection. But if you imagine it swinging in or out of the page, 
Then down here, it would be considered a rigid connection because if you tried to imagine if you just grabbed up here and pulled towards you, that hinge is, uh, is going to resist that as a fixed connection would. But basically how the problem would then see it uh, for the determination of the critical load would be that this would be a fixed connection at the bottom and free at the top. If there's no friction there preventing it from going into or out of the page, um, then we'd be dealing with two different effective lengths, one for it buckling this way and one for it buckling into and out of the page. And then if this is a rectangular beam or like an I-beam or something that has two different uh, radiuses of gyration, then you you can't just say, oh, I'll select the the one of the, the I'll just select the smaller radius of gyration and, and throw it in here and find out the critical stress or the smaller moment of inertia here and find out the critical stress because depending on which way you look at it, the end conditions might be different. So we'd have to check using the different uh, effective length for each uh, possible direction that it's buckling in. So we're going to go over a couple examples in the next few videos and uh, and hopefully it makes sense to you guys after seeing those examples.